an extreme example of suffering and that his life transcends that suffering no matter how, how extreme to be, to be beaten and whipped 
cast aside, rejected, to be bled out, suspended between heaven and earth? Don't you think that that is the most extreme amount of suffering that can be inflicted upon a human being? Pretty much. And so if he would allow himself to be sacrificed as a lamb for the forgiveness of sins, a sin offering according to the law of Moses, that he who would allow that to happen to him and not call forth millions of armies of angels to come and come to his rescue and save him at the last minute and say, won't you dare, this is Jesus, don't you know? He allowed it to take place. He allowed the election to be stolen. He allowed those people to take place and take over and to destroy and to, be, to convince us all that evil reigns and in fact is not him because he rose from the dead and transcended all of that. By that he shows us a way. By his cross he shows us a way that we are to follow. He says some of you, all of you will suffer. Some of you will suffer to the point of death. And oh, has it happened? Has it ever happened? No saying of revelation. They can say, well, the Jews were the ones who were set aside in the Holocaust. And no one denies their suffering. No one denies it. But the Christians for hundreds of years in every society has been a target by those who are in power, in governmental power, who want control over their subjects. They've been targeted for extermination. <coughs> Come burn down your house, kill you, sell your wife and your children, and your slave. Take your herds and your whatever wealth you have and take it for themselves. celebrated Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th of September, but as you know, Friday the 13th of October was the day in which they came, the king of France came and destroyed the Knights Templar. Knights Templar, Friday the 13th. Knights Templar were very devout people in their setting. And they were uh, really devout their premise was to transform a society from subjugation and oppression into sentience and self-determination through the living and expression of the gospel to serve the poor and to write books and to enlighten books. And that they happened to amass some property, some wealth, and because of this power and influence, they were the marked for extinction. And they were basically extinguished. They were set on fire. They rounded up these monks and they set them on fire. And they did this in the name of Christianity and King. And so that's all we were at the same about Friday the 15th. Saturday the 14th, yesterday, was the celebration of the discovery of the Golden Cross of Christ, the actual cross of Christ, which was discovered in Jerusalem in the year 33. And so it is still venerated to this day. As I said, we have a lot of people in our office. But what is it? What is it? It's just a, it's just a tree that has been cut on and formed into the cross on which hung the sacrificial lamb, the sin offering for all mankind, soaked with his blood, the blood offering, that with that blood which is sanctified, the whole earth seeped down 
from that cross. And so we have that, that here with us. If we can understand that he's, he, the, the, the followers of Jesus were astounded because he kept saying, the Son of Man must be delivered up and he must suffer and he must die at the hands of those those who he loves the most, those who his chosen people, those who he came to serve, to help them with his dreams, and to realization. They are the ones who will hate him, despise him, and they are the ones who will put him to death. They are the ones who construct this temple, he said, and I tell you not one stone be upon another one. They will tear it down. These things must happen. And it is a not to scare us, but to show us a way that transcends fear, that transcends politics. Don't be looking for the end of the world or the sky is going to fall on us. The earth is going to open up and swallow us up. Someone's going to lava bomb us and vaporize us all. It's not out of fear. I can round us up. And do the things they've done to the people in this group. Do not fear. Your faith in Christ Jesus. That your faith in him will transcend any and all things of this dimension, this time and space. Your faith in him will see you through the day so that nothing will prevail against you. He said, well, what can I relate this to? Well, none of us can relate to being crucified, being laid in the tomb and rising from the dead. Can any of us relate to that unless you have a near death experience of your own? An out of body experience where you say, Well, I looked down to where I was on the operating table and they were covering me up with a sheet and I knew that I was wrong. I had this encounter with Jesus. I went to life, light at the end of the tunnel. My grandmother was there with Jesus. The time is not now, we're back. And they tell these stories over and over again, near death experiences, and actual death experiences where people have actually died and come out of blood and told us about what happens on the other side. And they teach us about how to see things through different eyes. Because in that realm, wherever they went, there was flowing water and, and plants that seemed to glow with life within it, sparkling, teeming life, energy of all descriptions. They could understand, they had smell, they could smell the things that were so beautiful that they couldn't possibly describe it in English words. These have people who have gone over and come back and described it to us, what it was like. So that from that point on, after they re-entered their body on the operating table or wherever it was, in the fox hole, lots of these things have been told. They looked at everything differently then. Nothing and no one that they saw. They see it the same way they used to see. They saw each challenge as an opportunity. They saw each defeat as an opportunity to try again to win. They saw each persecution as an opportunity to love. They saw each sin against us as an opportunity to forgive. They see everything differently as an opportunity to do the right thing, to rise to a higher level of consciousness, to rise to a higher level of not only consciousness but action. So that our actions reflect what we believe, what we know. Oh. That's the meaning of love your enemy. Oh. Oh. All these things contradict our common sense. Why should I love someone who's coming to bash my head? Or running through with a sword, or shooting me, or rocking me? Why should I love 
wash our eyes off them. How often is possible? Because you don't see the same way the day. You see something that is far beyond the here and now, that you always and everywhere, and fit in all things. You see something transcendent. You see a different form of life, a different aspect of life within us, among us, and within us. So you see that it is a coming into a realization in this life that Christianity is about. So that having known it, having experienced, having said, I do believe in you, show me my unbelief, that you have an opportunity to do something else, to put our faith into actions. We were talking the other day about <coughs> the justification, the doctrine of justification. We were talking about this. Well, someone asked me, well, what is this doctrine? Why is it so complicated? What does it mean to be justified? Well, you know, to be justified, I mean, you have the right to act. If you are, you know, if, if you offer the sacrifice of your son on the altar by Abraham, he was justified in the, in the, the declaration of God that he that was righteous. He committed a righteous act. And as a righteous act, he was justified. Faith, we are justified by faith. And our faith and being justified brings us into acts of righteousness. This is our faith, this is our tradition, this is the whole belief in Christ Jesus. We cannot just, this goes against our nature to forgive our enemies, to love our enemies, to hate those who hate you, to love those who hate us. It goes against our natural instincts. But he is here to empower us. And he shows us by his death on the cross that even that, in its extreme example, was transcended by the love of the Father, and that faith was justified in the love of the Father in the acts of the resurrection and the righteousness. Believe it, take it to your grave, and beyond. Take this faith and live it. Live it. Live it. All in your life. And you see this. Nothing can be very against you. 